So we can start at page 12. When uh, Siddhartha's merciful glance showers the nectar of love of Krishna, which is the quintessence of all human goals. Sri Radha's merciful glance showers the nectar of love of Krishna, which is the quintessence of all human goals. This means that love of Krishna is sweetened by love of Sri Radha. She is Vrindavan's personified sweetness, and she is the all in all of the Vrindavan Leelas. Or how Gurudev explained, she is the Sumam Bono. In the 80th verse of this book, Sripad explains that the worship of Krishna without the worship of Rata is only a drop of the nectar ocean of divine love. There is an ocean, but without the worship of Radha, Krishna's worship is only a drop of this ocean. I offer my obeisances unto the greatness of she, whose merciful glance showers the nectar of love of Krishna, through which we can attain his lotus feet. Sriman Mahadeva has said, O Shiva, Harvati, anyone who meditates on Krishna, worships him or does japa of his holy name without worshipping Rata is a sinner. These are words of Shiva. So we can understand Shiva has a view to Vrindavan. He's like a doorkeeper there. And whenever we enter Vrindavan or a holy place like Radhakund, first we have to enter Shiva's place. He will give uh, entrance. And he explained here that it's uh, necessary, it's more than necessary to worship first Rata when we like to worship Krishna. Why? There is actually no Krishna we can worship because this sweet Krishna we like to worship is only this sweet Krishna with Radhika. We have no uh, entrance to this sweet Krishna Leelas without Radhika because she is the soul of Vrindavan. She is Vrindavan's person personified sweetness. So to reach sweet Krishna, only possible through Radhika. So then we finish, if you agree, 
this verse 3, and we can start today with the verse 4. I don't Is there think our we... Siddhanta Maharaj? Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I missed something, but I think uh, we skipped a page or two. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think we skipped. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh-huh. I mean, as I recall, we uh, should be up around. Yeah, there's a, I have a different edition, so my page numbering is not the same. Uh, but the paragraph where love of Krishna is the fifth and highest goal of you. Yes, that was also my feeling that we have to uh, continue on, on on page 11. Yeah. No, on page 13, 12 and 13. Hmm? Yeah, I, I think, Udoji, you have mm -hmm. a um, So with an older edition, um, that's page 11, so we're like a page behind. But anyway, if we can agree on the page. I don't understand. We can't Good hear you. Uh, do you see the paragraph that starts with Brahmeshwaradi? Oh. No. It's on page 12 in the middle. Mm -hmm. There, in my book, maybe I have another book, there is, uh, there is start the verse 4. This, do you have this book? You have the book. No. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I have different. <laughs> so did this two. There's two, like two. You see. Two, yeah. So like for us, page ten. Wow. Page Twelve. So we're two pages behind. So then, uh, if you agree, we we start really with the verse four. Or you can read the missing point. Good afternoon. But can also be interpreted as meaning the Lord oh, yeah, of the Lord of Brahma. It's on my page ten. Yes. Yes, your page ten. Bottom of page ten. I could not hear Shidanta Maharaj's reading. I cannot hear. Could you he hear? No. Uh, he, he is Today he is not reading Shidanta no. I mean, I have a mic, but it's a low battery. So okay. it's working, okay. it's working okay. now, but it uh, it has to be charged. I mean, I think it's okay. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, so. But you, you can hear know. us, Shidanta? Aha, uh -huh, very good. So nice. Brahmeshvara Adi can also be interpreted as meaning the Lord of Brahma, Krishna. Even for Krishna, even for Krishna, the amazing foot dust of Sri Radha is rarely attained. It is said that Krishna personally assumed the form of the... Sorry, Siddhantaji, the voice is, is very low, so we cannot okay, sorry. get it. So maybe Udhavji is... is uh, you can continue if you like. I... Even, the, even for Krishna, the amazing foot dust of Sri Radha is rarely attained. It is said that Krishna personally assumed the form of the poet Jayadeva to write the famous line Dehi Pada Palavam Udharam Give me your generous Lotus feet of Gita Govinda. 
the purport to the 201st verse of Radha Rasa Sutta Nidhi is one day Shri Mati is Manini, angry out of jealousy. So with the help of her girlfriends, Krishna keeps her feet on his head. Thus, her peak is, is soothed. Shrimati's lotus feet are moist with sweat. So the red lock on her foot soles sticks on Shyama's head, while his peacock feather falls off. This does not make Krishna inferior. The signs of Radha's mercy rather increase his glories. This makes him Rasikendra Mauli, the king of relishers. And this is the quintessence of Godhead. We can maybe see it is that when the peacock feather falls off, there is a special hint. What I can feel that there is a meaning behind. The peacock feather is a, a science of a cow herd and uh, his identification of a cow herd boy. But now there is another science on the top of Mohan's <laughs> head. This is the science of Radha's lotus feet, lotus foot, with sweat and color. So now his identification is is uh, a different. Now he not feels like a cowherd boy. Now he is a, a servant of Sri Radhika. Whatever mm, yeah. we, isn't it? Yes, yes. I think he he gets messed up. His his peacock feather falls off, and he has sweat, and he has red lack. But it makes him only greater, like you say. Only greater because now he's actually found the lotus feet. That's the highest place to be, to be the servant of it all. That's which it. is why, which is why yeah. we, we aspire to that too. Yes, exactly. Rade, Rade. Hmm? Rade, Rade. May I share one? So in Virapak Sumanjari also, Mark the maid servant. Trashi also get kick from our Swamini. Then this footrack coming. Do you remember this Rira? Hmm. This marked is a sign of we are Radha Darcy. Now, yesterday I also read this and I meditate what the meaning, why Mohan's peacock feather fell down. Now Gora Sundara Prabhu and Uta Prabhu give us answer. Now he is not a cowhead boy. His identity is changed. He became a marked maid servant. Tasi. Huh? Rade, thank you. <laughs> so beautiful. Uh, every detail is a meaning in this description and we can with every small thing we can go so deep in that feelings and this is a uh, very a, a miracle and uh, in the 
in the case of a maid servant to become a marked maid servant. Actually, there even is an identification. Term. Sorry? I just said even that term. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we are looking for, that we get marked by the mercy of Swamini. What were you going to say about identification? This is actually, we are still identified as a maid hmm. But this, um, this starts like with Krishna, to give up all our other identifications. Like he give up his cowherd mood. So whatever we are, that we have to give up. And Krishna is ready to give up. Brahma, Lakshmi, they are not ready to give up Krishna take full is fully surrendered to Radhika to Radhika. He is so sweet. He is uh uh he, he, uh, devoted. He is fully devoted to her. But the others, the demigod, they have positions they not like to give up. And because of them, they have no entrance to Vrindavan. Because then Radhika's sweetness cannot influence their heart. If there is another thing inside, like a position, and even the demigod position is, is not, uh, uh, qualified to enter in Radhika's sweetness. Hmm. I think this is a very important point and it tells us something about our practice. What's, what you're saying is that what is special about Krishna is that he already has a soft heart for Radha. That's why he can surrender. And when he surrenders, then he, he gets all the mercy of Radha. And this is the same for us. And it's kind of a difficult paradox. In order to have our hearts flooded by Radha, we need to have our heart already open. We need to be soft. So in order to get the softness, we need to be soft. In order to get the greed, we need to be greedy. This is also another way of understanding mercy. It just comes. It's a miracle. This is so our think... part in this game, Rudolf. Yes. Uh, uh. So, so there's some preparation. <laughs> yeah, please. Sorry. So this is, uh, for me, very interesting. Because you know, Jayadeva Goswami, Jayadeva appeared before Mahaprabhu. Long before, yeah. Yeah, maybe a few hundred years before. At that time, controller is main thing. Purusha is main thing. So, this Gurudev's word, or Prabhupada was, Conception of God is very prominent. But Jayadeva, I think for, for me, far, he's the first one to change this dimension. Actually, absolute truth, the source of energy is more powerful than God himself or God conception. And then this is kind of indicating Manjari Baba is coming very soon. Mm. Like, like I say, now winter, you know, say if now winter, but end of, in India, end of January or 
first week of February, slowly, slowly, you know, like a symptom of、uh, spring is coming. So similarly, before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, kind of Krishna w a n t to prepare. So Jadeva is like, he's like instrument. He changes dimension. You know, love is more higher than God. This is his, he changed this idea. This is completely shocked for many people. Even himself, he shocked. Oh, this is not good for this writing. And then he went to take class. Then Krishna came. Oh, actually, this is correct. And、uh, he did. And,、uh, you know, and then after taking class, he, he came back. He saw, oh my God, who's writing this? <laughs> <laughs> So, this is very, you know, amazing about Manjari Baba. So, this, this story is kind of preparing Manjari Baba, Mahaprabhu's appearance. That's my feeling. That, that. that I'd like to add a little bit that、uh, I would say in the West, my Jesus did the same. <laughs> He made the love, the prominent, Then this, uh, what is this, uh, Achtungsvolle, law and reverential, law and reverent. Oh, oh. No. So he m a k e love first. And when they ask him what is the main law, he said, This is you have to love God from your own heart with all your power. You have to love the Lord. God. There he used the word God because all others only understand that. And you have, you have to love your next like yourself. And、uh, that is、uh, the New Testament he starts and make the love prominent to the God. Consciousness, but they don't, maybe they don't accept, or only they make a religion out of this. But you cannot make religion out of love、uh, or with love, or you can make religion with love, yes, that's okay, but you cannot use the love. For a religious institutional thing, because love is universal. Love is on the soul level. And so you cannot use the love and say only we are right and others are wrong, because love is everywhere. And so he s t a r t with the prominence of Sri Rata. Rata's consciousness to God consciousness. Or how Gurudev said,、uh, summum bonum to the controller. So we see there is a, before Mahaprabhu, there are actually <clears throat> some who gave that kind of feeling, but not in the full. Jesus gave this one, this feeling one bath that is a, a two father. There is one bath, one mood, one feeling is love, but the full opening really is when Chaitanya came. He came as Mahabhav. And that means he came with the full opulence of our Swamini. And this is unique. There was some preparation before, but this is really a unique thing. And without him, we will never understand these hints with the peacock feather. This Details and all this when 
even God becomes a a maid servant or in the mood of a of a servant of the love. This is really unique. And then here it's described this does not make Krishna inferior. The signs of Radha's mercy rather increase his glories. So it makes him more attractive. This makes him Rasikendra Mauli, the king of relishes. And this is the quintessence of Godhead. So beautiful. Therefore, simply to increase his own greatness, Krishna always desires the dust of Sri Radha's lotus feet. And this is not a fairy tale. This also now it comes to proof. There is strong scriptural evidence for this statement. Krishna himself tells Uddhava in Srimad Bhagavat, I always follow my devotees to sanctify myself with their foot dust. It's amazing. Jiva Goswami comments on this verse, since I am not able to repay my devotees for their devotional service, I perform atonement by following them to take the dust of their feet for my purification. It's the ultimate humility. It's uh, Krishna is the devotee of the devotees. Yes. So, Uttamaji, you are right. I remember, in, I think, Bhagatam, someone said, I'm a devotee of, of the Lord. This is not my devotee. Someone who said, I'm a devotee of a devotee of a devotee of the Lord. That person, <laughs> I, this is a real devotee. So Krishna is, Krishna is just a kind of, you know, like a, showing us <laughs> that way. It's so sweet when we enter in, in this, when Krishna is telling this, it's uh, heartwarming. Dade, dade. I just wanted to add something um, that when somebody is doing Dandavat Parikrama, often um, I see, or even it happened to me, that the people touch the feet of the person who is doing the Dandavat mm. Parik to take the the dust of this person. So I wanted to ask also in before it was mentioned that the food dust of Srimati Radhika is called Srimat. And maybe somebody can explain this word uh, Srimat. Okay, I give some 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 humble explanation. Shri means many meaning. Shri could be beauty. Shri could be opulence. Shri could be like artistic talent. Many good thing. Good fortune could be Shri. Also, ultimately, Shri means Shri Mati Radhika. Mat means hub. 
Actually, yeah. mat, mat or mad is hub, hub. I have Earth. this one. Have. Earth. Yeah. So means, shuri mat means someone who has, say, someone who has good fortune, some who has, you know, beauty, some who has very good fortune, opulence, someone who has radica. <laughs> that person say shuri mat. Therefore, sometimes we say Shuri Mat Rupa Gosai, Shuri Mat uh, Ragnardas Gosai. Why is that? Because he has Radhika. Because Manjari could say, You are mine. <laughs> Birapax Manjari 96 bus. Manjari could say, You are mine. So means I am, I have you. You have to follow me. <laughs> you have to come follow me. I can bring you to me to that, you know, your moha. <laughs> so this is, you know, one meaning of Shirima. Rade, rade. <laughs> rade, rade. And this is the same Srimad, like for example, in Srimad Bhagavatam or different? Mm. Same. 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 But and the same this, as Shimati Radhika, as when how we say this same word. Same, but uh, you know, this Shuri we could differently we can interpret it. You know, but so, here it's it's just it's uh, yeah. explained in the verse himself. The dust of Sri Rata's lotus feet is called Srimat. And then the explanation of filled with opulences. It's it's here. It's written here, no? And so there is a. It's described what is meaning of Srimad in this case. There, the opulences of Rata's lotus feet is not meaning of uh, opulence in whatever power or gold or some some opulence we understand normally. Her opulence is that of the feelings. She is in the feelings. She is the most opulent, and she is the source of Mahabhar. She is Mahabhar. On a, in a, in Vilap Kushmanjali, there there was a description that she is Mahabhar, and the Manjaris have Mahabhar. So her opulence is that of love, because she is also the source of love, and of feelings, and all kinds of relationship. When we, for example, when we leave a person who is close to us, mother, father, whatever, actually, what we are missing is the love we ex exchange with that person. And this is also part of Radhika. So everywhere we see where is relationship, there is also Radhika. So this is her opulence. Maybe God is not there because the person don't believe in God. But they all believe in the love. Even when they are, when there are singles in Germany or Europe, we have more and more singles who live alone. But after some time, we can see that they have a cat or a dog. So, because there is an exchange of of love and relationship. So if there is no human, then they they give their love to someone else because everyone likes to share love with another person or another soul. So we can see that the opulence of Shirata is everywhere. Filled, she is filled, it's written here, is filled with opulences. 
The problem oh. is <laughs> the, the problem we had last time yesterday was that it's it's not everywhere that we have three examples where of of people who could not have relationship with her. There was Brahma, there was Lakshmi Devi, and then there was uh, our poor uh, Udava. Well, because they, they had not. Them. Sorry. <laughs> they all live together. Brahma, Shiva, they all have uh, a wife. They all live in relation and they all love, exchange love, but they don't like to surrender fully to Shiradika. They uh, have their own position and they uh, have also this identification with the position. Mm. They are different to our Mohan. Mohan I think they miss, I think mm. they misunderstand Radha. They don't understand her at first. They don't understand what she is and what she has. They don't yeah, understand they think, that she's Mah Mahabhav. Yeah. They think their position is more important mm. than love. And they don't like to surrender to our Radhika. They don't like to give up. I So we can also see in this material world that many are not interested in any kind of of teaching about spirituality and like this no? and also not on the conclusion no let me let me do my things i have no interest and like this so they are very happy in these circumstances they are and to come out of the circumstances everyone need some sukriti maybe in form of prasadam or doing some good to others or even listen the holy name that could be a, a start that some desire arise in the heart of a soul of a human being and even in Vrindavan we know stories about animals that they uh, regularly come to to the temple like dogs also and sitting there and listen the lectures so there this start then first there has to be a desire and desire only come by sukriti so if there is no sukriti you will not touch them with with all kind of scriptures or description of the sweetness of the Lord, whatever, they have no interest. They are disturbed by listening. Many. You can ask also the book distribution from, uh, we have many in our area here. Yeah. I'm going to talk to my cat about this. Yes. That's a good idea. <laughs> She's there to listen. That's the only one that listens to me. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I had one last uh, small remark about uh, what we just read here at, at the bottom, where Krishna is taking the dust of lotus feet. <clears throat> This citation is from Bhagavatam, and we know that the, the, the name Radha is never mentioned in Bhagavatam, nowhere. And yet, here we understand what it is. We understand that he's taking the lotus feet of, of Radha. Yes, because so can, now now we go beyond the uh, the Vedas. Oh, yes. this 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 these books are are more. They go beyond. 
they are different to the Vedas, to the traditional Vedic scriptures. Then again, it is said, now in Chaitanya Charitamrita, the merciful glance of Sri Radha showers the quintessence of all human goals of life. Wow. That quintessence, now this is uh, Prabhupada speaking, that quintessence is love of Krishna and Sri Radhika. Showers it all around. And another quotation from the same the same uh, chapter. Love of Krishna is the fifth and highest goal of human life. So this is what quintessence means. The fifth essence, the fifth goal. Love of Krishna is the fifth and highest goal of human life compared to which religiosity, economic development, sense, enjoyment, and liberation, the other four goals, are as insignificant as blades of grass. Prem, the fifth goal of life, the quintessence, is like an ocean of nectarian loving bliss, compared to which the bliss of liberation and other goals of life are not even one drop. The great treasure of love of God, Prema, is the fifth goal of human life, which makes the devotee relish Krishna's sweet taste. Finally, through Prema, Krishna becomes controlled by his devotees, and through Prema, the devotees relish the blissful taste of Krishna's service. This last line is Bhavala Sarati. It's, it's through the Prem that Radha makes flow that Krishna is controlled, that he becomes controlled by Radha and Prem, it becomes the highest. Now, Prabhupada, when Sri Radha simply casts her merciful glance, this love rasa of the glance is attained without any further endeavor, without trying anything else, without doing anything else, and flows in. Innumerable, innumerable directions. What to speak of her merciful glance? Simply of her, as, of her, of her. Yes, yes. Right. Mm. Yes, yes, her merciful glance. What to speak of her merciful glance? Simply by seeing Sri Radharani, one attains the treasure of love of Krishna without any separate endeavor. That's only oh, by need. seeing Sri Radhika. So, we, we know from <clears throat> Vila Kushmanjali how intense the prayers from our Raghunath Das are to see his Swamini. 
we remember that all because we read before we love Kushmanjali and how much greed was there and so how much separation, feelings of separation. Without seeing her, he was very in a sad situation. And now we can read here. What to speak about her merciful glance? Simply by seeing Shiradharani, one attains the treasure of love of Krishna without any separate endeavor. I I have a a question. <clears throat> so when we when we read these possessive forms, Krishna's service <laughs> and love of Krishna. It can be taken two ways. Yes. Right? Krishna's yeah. service can, can mean can mean service to Krishna, or it can mean service that Krishna is performing. And love of Krishna can mean loving uh, us we are loving Krishna, or it can mean Krishna's love of someone. So yeah, I think I mean it means my love. Sorry. Yeah, my my understanding is it's it's Krishna's love of Radharani. <laughs> that is the it's not it's not um our love of Krishna. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if no, it's, it's, that. Yeah, yeah, it's a very important point, but it's not Krishna's love for Radharani, it's the other way around. It's it's uh, love for Krishna. Love of Krishna means love for Krishna. Prema so means, Prema means, means that, love for Krishna. Uh -huh. So we are loving, this means our love for Krishna. The treasure love of Krishna means our love for Krishna. Yeah. We never love Krishna directly. We love Krishna always through Radhika. We yeah, have no, no own, own interest of a direct exchange with love. This is Gopi Bhav. Or, yeah, that's that's also, what's saying here. Hmm? Or uh, Sakya. But we are Manjaris. We only see our Radhika and our service through her. Of course, our goal is to bring them together and make both happy, but always first is Radhika. Hmm. This is a Manjari is always like this. Never see Krishna separate or first or, or even equal. Our Radhika is first. First is Radhika. Exactly. Um, so in the first one where we say, uh, through Prem, Krishna becomes controlled by his devotees, including Radharani, right? That he is controlled by her. Because he is controlled by love. Yes. And if, yeah. we, if we serve the love, then... This is the meaning of controlling because love controls him. So we know this beautiful scene when also the, this gopis put some cow dung on his face oh. to count. This is, uh, for me, it's, it's, uh, such an amazing, uh, picture. How he surrendered to those who are in love and serving the love. So he stays as a cowherd boy and they put some cow dung points on his what's that? Stirn? Forehead. 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 Yeah. And the when we And yes he is so controlled that he is uh, taking shelter when when uh, Swamini is in Man, then he takes shelter of the uh, Manjaris or Sakis also. Then he need their help. So he is controlled by the love. A very good point. And also, this Krishna Prema, generally speaking, I think Gopi Baba, until Gopi Baba, or maybe Saki Baba, 
is not Manjari Baba, generally speaking. Mm. So therefore, you know, if we say Krishna Prema is center is Krishna. So, but our Manjari is center is not Krishna. Our center right. is Radhika. Yes. And, and uh, so Gorasundara said very nicely, we are, we are serving Krishna, but uh, not my Krishna. <clears throat> Radhika's Krishna. Yeah. This is a very, very important point. Mm. And then, Guru, yeah. and then Guru Dev was suggesting, actually, we say Pancham Purusharata, but uh, pa beyond Pancham Purusha, more higher Pancham Purusha, <laughs> more like say, Six Purusharata or seven. Yes. Yes. This is, this is real Manjari Baba. Yeah. So this is maybe we should, we should add. This is not described here. That's the point. Here it is the highest, <laughs> the fifth, but we know the sixth. <laughs> Thank you, Tainanaji, that you add this to that. We need this. In the Padma Purana, Patalakanda, <clears throat> Kaninda, chapter 40, it is described how Sri Narada attained the audience of Sri Radha and how he spoke from his ex own experience. I have never tasted such an ocean of love for Govinda's lotus feet as after seeing her, that is Radhika. Wow. So after... So that confirms what the previous verse said, that only by seeing Radha, the love for Radha's Krishna flows. Right, and by saying Govinda instead of Krishna, we know that it's Mohan, Radha's Krishna. For me, it's astonishing that Narada got the audience of Sri Radhika. The others not. That's astonishing, isn't it? Narada attained the audience of Sri Radha. Why? Yeah, I, I, this is my question uh, because I'm. Uh, I have no answer. Others not get her audience, but he got. So maybe Gurudev can explain if he is there. Mm. Or Jayanandaji, maybe you can answer. I don't know why. Read the line again. Oh, Please. yes. It's a Gurudev, Jai Gurudev. It's a, uh -huh. it's a quote from Padma Purana. It is described how Sri Narada attained the audience of Sri Radha and how he spoke from his own experience. And Gaurasundra is asking, how could Narada get the audience of Radha? Uh, can I give my? <laughs> to see this, if you see Srivas in Gaurasundra, he was Narada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whole life he worshipped Narayan and up to Krishna. 
नारायण कृष्ण आप भगवान इसी चैतन्य द राधा इज द आईएस एंड द सब्जेक्ट बिकम द लॉर्ड इन चैतन्य so that way he get the audience here to realize it in padma purana is mentioned and this realization happened in the mahaprabhu time oh mahavishnu and narada both are praying one is mahavishnu and shivas is a narada who always worship narayan today he is worshiping radhika because when he see mahaprabhu he see radha and when he see nityanand he see anangmayadevi and when he see गजाधर ही सी द राधा शक्ति सो एवरीथिंग ही सी राधा राधा सिस्टर वर्किंग इन द क्रिएशन एंड ऑल द एनर्जी ऑफ यूनिवर्सल एनर्जी इज दैट प्रेमा शक्ति एंड दैट इज राधा शक्ति then he surprised krishna this he radish so one thing my mahatma also want to share you please listen radhe radhe my dear sorry i was a little late that's been the theme of my day yeah um we were listening so beautifully to the explanations of the previous sentence and i felt inspired to just share um one small inspiration that came the sentence what to speak of her merciful glance simply by seeing shri radharani one attains the treasure of love of krishna without any separate endeavor so my question was what what is this this love of krishna this love of krishna is is radharani it's it's radharani's energy that's where his love comes from so simply by seeing radharani we can attain radharani's love and what does it mean to to see radharani to see radharani is to be accepted by her in the form of a mandri of a maid servant they're the ones that are seeing they're the viewers they're the ones that are seeing radharani and so when we see her when the fortunate souls who she reveals herself to they're attaining this treasure this mandri form and that's done all by mercy without any separate endeavor there's no doing in this process it all comes from mercy right so we can see <laughs> what we need to see radhika can we see radhika with material eyes I explain no only in our in our sarup in our mandri sarup can we see radharani divine eyes can see radhika mm. and so that was wondering me that narada got the audience of shirata that means he got before then he got divine eyes because the conclusion from this is only divine eyes can see divine 
material eyes can see material, divine eyes can see divine. So now it's clear that we need a spiritual body to recognize, to see Swamini and uh, to serve Swamini, we need a whole body, not only the eyes. <laughs> so that makes all clear then, we, we have to understand that Narada got divine eyes when he saw Radhika. And um, Gurudev explained so nice this that happened in Gora Leela. One thing more I want to share. Krishna is very important. Right? But Krishna is important from two consciousness. One is my material bodily consciousness, I see Krishna. So, just I want to believe that he is a controller. That's it. That he is a controller and I have to know him. I have to think that. But there is no relation here, no feeling here, no understanding here. Why? Why not feelings out there? No, why not relation is there? Why not I feel and I relate and I don't want to see only controller to him? One question. Yeah, from the controller, I like to get something. What do you say, Gurudev? Amazon. This is the controller, he has everything for me, for my seva. It means I don't know the real Vigyan. Right. I have knowledge, collect from the scriptures, but I have no Vigyan, no science on, about that. Mm. And what is the science? Relation is the science. And when you see that time, I have so many relations in material world, but I don't want to keep relation with Krishna. Why? Because we not take shelter of Radhika. Hmm. So, love is important, it can only come but through her. How I will relate without that? How when love is not there, relation is not there, and this love and relation is in material world, in identification of my material world. How divine love I will understand without the mercy of Radhika and what you think that Krishna will like other love. He need pure love and that is divine love. How I will know without Radhika? without taking center of the love, how I will know Divine Love. So, this Krishna is Radha's Krishna, because only she can do that love. We are not qualified to see. Then just now Mahatma is telling something, now you add this. Read again. What to speak of her merciful glance. Simply by seeing Sri Radharani, 
one attains the treasure of love of Krishna without any separate endeavor. One attains the treasure of love of Krishna means one understand Krishna's love by her merciful glance. No need extra efforts. No. By only knowing her and practicing her to watchful, we will understand Krishna's love, how he likes by the, her behavior, what love Krishna likes. So this is Radha's Krishna. And Krishna, love means Radha. Without Radhika, this love impossible to the material condition soul can do. Only we can be a viewer, not a doer. <laughs> <coughs> if we want to do love, I want to do direct love for Krishna, is not possible. We can view Krishna love through Radhika's love. And this is viewer tendency. So the Krishna is very important. Radhika is very important, but one viewer is also important. Maybe he is in Manjari Bhav, may he is in Gopi Bhav, may he is in Sakhi Bhav, may he is in Sakha Bhav, may he is in Vasadi Bhav. But one mood is important to view it. How it can be possible without identifying how to feel it that love? Mm. We have, one has to be viewer to realize it, and we can realize who is doing it. All they are realizing, Mother Jasoda is realizing that love. Nanda Baba is realizing that love. Friends are feeling that love. Is the feelings are there? But this all love is coming from the source of the love. This takes time to understand, but when we understand, all become crystal clear. Like uh, just now, Mahatma is reading again. Read that. What to speak of her merciful glance? Simply by seeing Sri Radharani, one attains the treasure of love of Krishna without any separate endeavor. We can see this in the animals in the forest when they meet Chaitanya. They have, they have no brain in this case to, to understand something, but by this intense energy of Swamini inside Mahaprabhu, they uh, they got influenced by this highest energy. So they dance with him.
only by seeing him, there was also Radhika. Radi Radi, may I have another question? Yes. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, here is mentioned love of Krishna is the fifth and highest goal of human life. And I'm always thinking about it. Why, why is it not the first goal? And it's three times it's, it's mentioned here. Uh, in every sentence, the fifth goal of life, but it has to be the first, <laughs> the first goal. Why they do it? It mentioned three times and again and again. It has a sense or not? Well, at first, it's meant to be the first. It's meant to be the highest. But the other four are always talked about and. And now we're saying, well, but higher than all of these is the fifth. It's like you say, it's number one, but it's because it's the last one, it's the best. Does that mean that we have the, that we uh, had made this experience of these four goals before, before we are able to to go for the fifth goal? I think no. It means that enveloping, containing all the other goals is Prem. So that if you have Prem, then you've already attained everything else. There's nothing more to want, there's nothing more to need, there's no liberation necessary, there's no religion necessary. Mm. The Prem is the, it's not only the highest, it's the summum bonum, that's the, the sum of all of the other ones and more. It's the meaning of all the other ones too. Mm. Once we've understood Prem, we understand everything. Once we realize Prem, then we've realized everything. Mahatma, do you want to... You see, Mahatma, you didn't come late. You came exactly on time when we needed you. Do you want to continue or should I? Um, yeah, I can, I can read. Thank you, my dear. My God, always such a beautiful perspective you have on all of our questions and material goings on that we have. In the Padma Purana, Patala Kanda, Chapter 40, it is described how Sri Narana attained the audience of Sri Radha and how he spoke from his own experience. I have never tasted such an ocean of love for Govinda's lotus feet as after seeing her, Radhika. Srimad Sanantana Goswami wrote in his Brihad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam Mitra, when goddess Radhika is ever seen, one sees prema in very person and one and one gains experience of that love
So seeing Radhika means experience. <laughs> seeing Radhika means to realize, experience love, highest love, no? <clears throat> it's amazing. And that is, that is the, the separation feeling of Raghunath, because he, he saw Radhika, and he saw love, and he realized love, he experienced love, this highest love. And when he not see her, uh, we can feel his pain. If we separate from this, it's, uh, this is a real, a heavy pain of separation. This is also, if we really desire this, we, and we get it one time, we will forget everything, like Raghunath Das. He also forget, forgot his own body. He forgot to eat, to sleep, whatever. He not recognize this material. Even in separation, he was fully fixed on Sri Radhika. So our good hope is to see her once. I'd like to read the sentence again and maybe add one letter. Perhaps it was left out. For me, the sentence is a little bit clearer. Um, when Goddess Radhika is ever seen, one sees prema in every person and one gains experience of that love. Amazing. Okay. When Goddess Radhika is ever seen, one sees prema in every person and one gains experience of that love. This is a message for a lifetime. This is a lesson for every day. Yeah, that's what I feel too. And again, we are back to the divine eyes. Yeah. We can Radhika seen only with divine eyes. If we get the divine eyes, we will see her everywhere. Not in the material eyes, we have divine eyes, even in this world, like Raghunath. And this is our, oh, go ahead. No, no. And I was just, this is our Gurudev's teaching of a spiritual life 24 7. When by mercy we receive the ability to see Radhika with our Sarup, with these divine eyes, then we practice. We practice 24 7 in every person. We practice seeing that prema everywhere. We see our Swamini in every person, every interaction we have. And through that, we gain more and more experience of this love. Mm. And in this way, when we see something that we put our focus on, this is what our attention goes to. And so when we're seeing 
prema everywhere in every person in every interaction we're also feeling that and so in this way we can come into this feeling of prema 24 hours a day and this is our sadhana Sri Radhe Especially in this present age of Kali quarrel, the day has come to directly experience this. So the time to practice this 24-7 is now. For now, Sri Gora Sundra has descended, accepting the mood and luster of Sri Radhika and blessing the people of the world who see his brilliant golden aura with Prema. Wow. So this is the practice and Mahaprabhu showed us the way to this practice. And the way to this practice is to see him with Prema in the eyes of Radharani, to see Radharani in his dissension. Harina Ma, Harina Ma, this is what his teaching is. This is the holy name, is actually, how Gurudev explained, is uh, actually is uh, all the moods of Mahaprabhu is in that Mahamantra. And so by the Mahamantra, he bless this age of Kali. That we can remember this sweet Leela of Radha and Mohan when they meet and they meet in union then after in Ramayana, how Gurudev explained. So the Mahamantra is the real blessing, and to understand the Mahamantra. It's only possible by this loving relationship in the mood of a Manjari. Only the Manjaris understand Mahaprabhu. And he came and gave this mood of a Manjari that not given before. So he also gave, or she gave, the understanding to understand himself. He gave the blessing, and he also gave the understanding from the blessing. How to understand in the relationship, in the mood. What is hard to understand, because Mahaprabhu was a multiple person, Personally, personally, or what is it? Personality. Personality. Multiple. Who can understand this kind of uh, of person? There's only one who is very close to them. Otherwise, 
who who knows in which mood he is just now because he changed I love your beautiful comments about the Maha Mantra. It it is the gift from Mahaprabhu, and and when we give a gift, what do we give? We we give what we have. And what does Mahaprabhu have? Mahaprabhu has Radhika, Mohan, and Manjari Bhav. Wow. And he gives all of this with this mantra. But our focus is always on that of the Manjari, to see Mahaprabhu with the eyes of Manjari. Jen. Yeah, as is the case with so much of this, there can be so many different interpretations and perspectives and Margora always does such a beautiful job of bringing us back to the point. So even though there's all these potential interpretations and meanings, what is the one that we choose to focus on? How do we choose to see? What, what are we focusing our vision on? What are we bringing into our life? What feelings are we trying to cultivate? Mm -hmm. Such is the prowess of Sri Radha's aura. The following verse, two hundred and thirty four of Brihad. Bhagavat Mitra says Bhagavat Tamritam. Bhagavat Tamritam. Thank you. Yes. Abrihad Bhagavat Tamritam says when there is such a descent of Sri Krishna Chandra that can distribute love of himself or when Sri Radhika manifests some descent then through his or her audience that prema must be experienced. This verse speaks about Sriman Mahaprabhu. Sri Radha's merciful glance showers the nectar of love of Krishna, which is the quintessence of all human goals. This means that love of Krishna is sweetened by love 
of Sri Radha. Mm -hmm. She is Vrindavan's personified sweetness. And she is the all in all of the Vrindavan pastimes. In the 80th verse of this book, book Sri of Krishna without the worship of Radha is only a drop of the nectar ocean of divine love. Or the very life of love of Krishna Chandra is love of Sri Radha's lotus feet. I offer my obeisances unto the greatness of she whose merciful glance showers the nectar of love of Krishna through which we can attain his lotus feet. <laughs> Sriman Mahadev has said O Shiva Parvati anyone who meditates on Krishna worships him or does japa of his holy name without worshipping Radha is a sinner. <laughs> Thus ends verse 3. Beautiful. Hmm. I don't want to break, I'm sorry to break everyone's deep meditation on this um <clears throat> so when we hear about sri radhika's merciful glance and then we talk about having audience of radharani so both of these are bestowing it says bestowing prem in other words you, we have it's 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 like it's an it's inevitable or it's can't avoid it but what is, it's almost like they're synonymous, you know? Her glance, her merciful glance, and seeing her. It's like, almost like two sides of the same coin. So it's hard for me to distinguish one from the other and hard for me to fathom how to obtain these in the Sadhika Deha. So maybe uh, someone could reflect on this for me.
So that we are sitting here is a science that she already gave us the merciful plans. But to realize and see her directly, we have to enter more and more deep in our citadea. Only with this dear divine eyes we get from our Gurudev, it's a mercy of him. And he give it because he got it from his Gurudev and we go back and then we come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then we see who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and realize, oh wow, there is Radhika. There is the presence of Radhika. And in the form of Mahaprabhu, she gave the merciful glance to this Kali Yuga. And we can attain it by the mercy of Gurudev. And if we enter more and more deep in these topics, we get divine eyes. And we enter our spiritual body. In that case, that we are realized we are Manjari. And as a Manjari, we get her Dashan. Like Raghunath got it, we also will get it. And uh, there, in the darshan, for sure we get her merciful glance. But actually, she took a look at us. Otherwise, we will not sit here together and uh, enter in this topmost Beautiful topics, not possible without her mercy. And actually, we are together with the Manjari. We forget it sometimes. Isn't it Siddhanta Ji? Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, I keep coming back to Mahaprabhu's mercy. So, <clears throat> when it says, when there's such a great descent of Sri Krishna Chandra that can distribute love of himself. Or when Sri Radhika manifests some descent, then through his or her audience, that frame must be experienced. This verse speaks about Mahaprabhu. So if we, you know, obviously Mahaprabhu is still living. In, yeah, you know, in in the Ishtadev everywhere he is present. I feel, you know, so figuratively we say when we see him, then we get this prem automatically if our hearts are open to it, of course. So I guess that prem. Receiving that prem is kind of like the initiation into this. It's the start of everything. Then we can go mm -hmm. deeper and actually have the audience of Shimatrani in the way you were explaining through the Guru's mercy. So this is kind of my <clears throat> attempt to understand how all of this unfolds, you know. And how good they have described this morning very nicely there is uh, uh, we have to fix our relationship like Mata Yashoda like Nanda Baba like the Gopas and so on and so on if this is fixed we can enter in the feelings as long as we are not fixed in the mood then there is no relationship and there is no prema Prema only grows in the relation. 
so that fits together without one is not possible yeah exactly right. there must be a manjari and a radhika to enter in the prema prema is there but if there is no manjari it's not relishable isn't it if the mandra is not there who's capable of relishing it yeah when we decide to be a mandra to enter in that feeling and now we fix all is clear <clears throat> not to sing about others we have to sing about ourselves in that identification no looking left and right we are who we are and we can enter this prema there's another way of looking at it when yeah. we the, the definition of a mantri what is a mantri it's one who relishes prem who is capable so instead of saying you need to be a mantri to relish prem if you're relishing prem then you are a mantri right first you have to decide who you are otherwise you will not relish you, you need to become, a person you, you have to become who you are <laughs> you're yes, already sir. a mantri sorry that yes yeah. Mahatma is reading Adi Lila for Kanto. The first page, what is talking about three reasons of appearance of Chaitanya. I was listening. Then he said to me, the first reason to fix the Eastern Eastern. I was really Mm. and then i said this read again he said that and then i feel that is really fixing is next then he said second region go there i said what the second region when he is he said this is sarup nishtha i don't understand what he is telling then i said read again then i was shocked it was your sarup nishtha man is sarup fixes he is after sarup and when we have a east and sarup then third third step Third reason of appearance of Chaitanya is that is Leela, the past time. Only the Manjaris are looking how last Sati, they become very happy to feel their feelings of Divine Kapur. That how last Sati is mentioned there. Wow. So he he explains so nicely, and I am listening again and again and again and again to meditate that. Then I was meditating, and I am relishing this. So you also read and test that what Mahatma and Mahatma will also share something. One of the beautiful, I don't know if foundation is the right word, but the um, kind of the umbrella that goes over 
so much of what we talked about, everything about what we talk about here and practice and all of our sharings, it all is mercy. It's all Guru Kripa. And when we were sharing yesterday about these three reasons that Mahaprabhu descended, they're written in this order because Prabhupada is showing us that Mahaprabhu is, is showing us the way. This is the path. First, we fix ourselves in our East today. Once we're fixed there, then Sarup can come. And only when Sarup comes, then we can experience the Leelas. And through all of this, we need not endeavor. It all comes from mercy. This is the teaching of Guru Dev from the beginning on. Fix Ishta Dev, fix Swarup, stay in the Leela. It's so beautiful. Highest. If we accept this, all is done. Yeah. What do we need more as to know who we are, as to know what is our Ishtadev and the, what to do in the Leela? There is no more to realize and then we are waiting for the Darshan of Radhika, that she will accept us as her maidservant. If we fix a full face, live in the Swarup, then Leela will come. So, Gorasandra, today we are reading Vidapak Sumanjari this morning. Uh -huh. Then, you know, <laughs> then Ananda said, I'm, I'm not qualified. But my guru, my guru dev, who is your dancer, is qualified. Person, introduce me your lotus feet. Then you must accept Jai. me <laughs> as your medicine. <laughs> this is our guru parampara. I'm not qualified, but my guru dev, guru devi is qualified. And she is introducing me at, you know, your lotus feet. You must accept. Beautiful. This is Ananda Swabhaji experience. Wow. Hundred percent. Agree. Beautiful. Because of this, our Gurudev is always connected with his Gurudev. Wow, well, where you find this? In Adi Lila 4. Adi Lila 4. The introduction. Introduction again. <laughs> Now you see the subject, then it becomes clear. And this is the young boy nature. Mahatma, he is a so gifted child. I'm surprised to see him in the night. 
I refer to my previous comment of it all being Guru Kripa. <laughs> Actually, you, I feel that Gurudev uh, doing like Mahaprabhu. He is yeah. giving to his disciple the understanding. And like Rupa make to Raghunath. That happened when you are close to Gurudev. Then you become pipeline. This is what I can feel. Oh, then it's flowing. The mercy is flowing then. And uh, how you write <clears throat> without endeavor. Isn't it? We read about without endeavor. Mm. I cannot find now. What to speak of her merciful glance. Simply by seeing Sri Radharani, one attains the treasure of love of Krishna without any separate endeavor. Not impersonal. No. You see, Radha is Krishna. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> 